Hello, I'm Nona Melkonian with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, we're here to discuss Proposition A, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, June 3rd. Proposition A is a general obligation bond measure that would authorize the city to sell up to $400 million in bonds to improve specific public safety and emergency response facilities. The bond proceeds could only be used to upgrade and retrofit the emergency firefighting water system, which provides a dedicated water supply for fighting fires, improve and retrofit neighborhood police and fire stations, build a seismically secure structure for the medical examiner, and build a seismically secure structure for the police motorcycle unit and crime lab. Proposition A would also require the Independent Citizen General Obligation Committee to oversee the spending of bond funds. This nine-member committee is appointed by the mayor, the board of supervisors, the controller, and the civil grand jury. If you vote yes, you want to allow the city to sell up to $400 million in general obligation bonds to finance the construction, improvement, and seismic retrofitting of specific public safety and emergency response facilities. If you vote no, you do not want to allow the city to sell up to $400 million in general obligation bonds to finance the construction, improvement, and seismic retrofitting of specific public safety and emergency response facilities. I'm here with George Ross, Proposition A spokesman. Welcome. We're also joined by Starchild, local activist with the Libertarian Party and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. Good to be here. I'd like to start with some opening remarks from each of you. Mr. Ross, would you like to speak as a proponent? Sure, um, and thank you again so much for having me. Uh, I support Prop A, and I stand with the mayor, the entire board of supervisors, progressives, conservatives, the business community, labor, the Sierra Club, in supporting this because it represents a critical investment in disaster response in this city. Uh, in 1906, San Francisco was hit by one of the worst natural disasters in American history. Uh, but what a lot of people forget is that it wasn't actually the earthquake, but the three days of fires that followed that destroyed 80% of the city, left countless dead, and, and left the community to really rebuild this entire city. And what the community did then was they bound together and they built one of the most advanced water, uh, emergency water systems in the world. And that emergency water system protected this city for a century, but a century later, it's deteriorating. And so we need to pass Prop A because Prop A invests in taking that system, this great system, and investing in the cisterns, the hydrants, the pipes that deliver water to the critical areas after a natural disaster. This year was the 25th anniversary of uh, the 1989 earthquake. We saw the Mission Bay blaze just two months ago. It was a stark reminder of how critical it is to give firefighters, first responders, the tools they need uh, to respond during times of crisis. And so I would encourage everyone to uh, go to the polls and vote for Prop A. Mr. Child, would you like to give your opening remarks? Sure. Uh, we believe this is the wrong time to do this. Uh, it's widely recognized that the number one issue in San Francisco right now is lack of affordability of housing. Housing prices are through the roof. Many people are being forced to leave the city as a result. And here we have a measure by city government leaders who didn't plan, didn't budget as they went, paying for earthquake retrofitting and uh, upgrading as they went along, and now want to pass this huge $400 million uh, borrowing money, basically, uh, to be paid off by property taxes. And up to half of these property taxes can be passed along to renters. So this is something that will hit everybody and, and the poorest among us the, the most. Uh, city leaders themselves don't necessarily have to worry so much about this because they make much more money on average than the rest of us. Uh, the San Francisco Chronicle in 2010 reported that one in three San Francisco government employees made over $100,000 a year. The San Francisco Examiner uh, noted that the average city government salary and benefits uh, as of 2008 were almost $120,000. Um, you know, so these people, the people that, uh, you know, George mentioned uh, largely are not hurting. You know, they're the one, not the ones that are going to feel the pinch of this. Uh, but it is their bad budgeting and failure to plan uh, that has put them in the situation where they say they want to do this. And there needs to be more cost-benefit analysis. You know, only four people died from collapsed uh, buildings in the 1989 quake. It's much more recent than 1906, so that's a better example to use. 
uh, I think that more lives could be saved by their measures. Starchild brings up an interesting point. Is this the right time to invest in our city's infrastructure and our emergency awareness system when the city's still recovering from the recession? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it is critical to be investing in disaster response infrastructure. Uh, this is one of these topics where it's easy to say, oh, well, maybe now's not the right time until a major disaster hits. Now, scientists have already told us uh, with a fair degree of certainty that another large earthquake will be hitting San Francisco within the next uh, 30 years, that that is, we're sitting in a uniquely dangerous spot in the world for, uh, for natural disasters. And so to say, oh, we should kick this down the road or we should do this in a, you know, over a long period of time is just completely irresponsible. Uh, Starchow brought up a lot of issues that the Libertarian Party may have, may take issue with. I'm here to talk about Prop A though, and, and Prop A has nothing to do with salaries or anything like that. It, there's a government, uh, a, a bond oversight board, uh, which oversees exactly how this money is spent, which is a prudent use of those resources. It's towards investing in the emergency water uh, system. It's towards retrofitting fire stations so firefighters can access victims after a natural disaster. And it's for things like the crime lab, motorcycle police who get to victims first when other people and other responders physically can't. Uh, the Mission Bay Fire should really remind us this is not something to be phased in over time. We need to invest in this and it's an extremely prudent use of resources without raising taxes. Starchild, is this the right time to invest in emergency preparedness? It's the right time to start budgeting responsibly, which should have been done decades ago. Uh, the city leaders have not budgeted responsibly. Uh, we don't want to start now. We want to start yesterday. Uh, but uh, you, you mentioned uh, the property tax, and that, that leads me to an interesting point. You know, the proponents say that, uh, you know, and I quote, uh, uh, Proposition A will not increase property tax rates. But the Ballot Simplification Committee, the neutral uh, committee that's charged to write up descriptions of ballot measures, says, and again I quote, Proposition A would allow an increase in the property tax to pay for the bonds. It would permit landlords to pass through 50% of the resulting property tax to tenants. And, uh, you know, if you compare those two statements, obviously one of them is false. Who are you going to trust, the neutral ballot committee or the proponents that, that say, oh, this won't increase your taxes? Well, where are they going to get the money? You know, borrow $400 million? You know, the, the way to do this, pay for it, is not by going and soaking the people in ways that's going to raise their cost of living by increasing rents and property ownership costs to make San Francisco even less affordable. The way to do it is maybe have the people in government give back a little bit, budget more responsibly, maybe cut their own salaries, their six-figure salaries that they don't need when there's people still living homeless on the streets in this town. Mr. Ross, is $400 million in bond measures the amount that's necessary to shore up our emergency preparedness system. Absolutely, and, and as I said, uh, with the government, with the, uh, the bond oversight committee, all that money is tracked as it is spent, and there's strict auditing and oversight of every dollar that goes out, and that each measure, uh, each dollar, that 400 million is, is accounted for and going to infrastructure projects that are critical. Uh, to start child's point, uh, the city policy is one of the most responsible city policies in all of America, which is that we do not borrow new money for bonds without closing out outstanding bonds. So we pay back as we go and we retire old debts in order to, uh, to take out new bonds. And, so, and, and by doing so, we've been able to build a new hospital. We've been able to build 12 new libraries over the past several years uh, without accumulating new debt. Uh, closing those out before we move on. So this has been an extraordinarily successful policy. Now, as far as the, uh, the 400 million, again, you've got almost 60 million of that going towards the water system. You've got uh, a large amount going to new crime labs, which will be critical, uh, and that's gonna be in the Bayview, uh, to, to responding when you have chaos breaking out after a natural disaster oftentimes, and you've got these people able to deploy effectively um, and giving them the tools they need. This is why the chief of the police, the, the fire chief, uh, public safety organizations across the city are saying, you gotta get this passed right now. Is $400 million the amount that should be spent? The issue isn't so much the cost, it's where the money's coming from. Uh, we don't believe that uh, the money should be taken out of the backs of taxpayers. And, and uh, George Menson mentions uh, 
you know, that the bond money is being paid back. Well, it's being paid back, you know, out of the pockets of, of ordinary people living and working in this city. Uh, San Francisco city government has a budget of around $7.3 billion. That's bigger than the budget of many states, entire states, you know, and they only have to take care of an area of 49 square miles. So I think that if they trim their budgets a little bit and tighten their belts, uh, maybe reduce some of those six-figure salaries, not give themselves such gold-plated pensions, they would have plenty of money to pay for these kinds of things like building retrofits and all the other uh, fire and, and uh, emergency response things that George was mentioning without, again, making this a less affordable place to live by increasing property taxes and rents. And that's what this measure is going to do. Thank you both for your comments. We have a little bit of time left, and I'd like to use this time uh, to get your any final thoughts that you may have. Um, Mr. Ross, would you like to speak first? Yeah, uh, again, thank you so much for having me. Again, uh, Proposition A, which invests in this critical infrastructure for disaster response, which gives our firefighters, our paramedics, uh, our police the tools they need to respond when the worst case scenarios have hit, uh, have hit our city, it's, it's an essential measure to pass. When that disaster hits, it's not going to be George, it's not going to be Star Child, it's not going to be uh, the people I work with, it's not going to be the Libertarian Party who responds to save lives. It's going to be our firefighters and it's going to be our first responders. And when they are saying, we need this, we need to make sure that we have these tools and that our water system is functioning, we have to heed that call uh, as a city. That's why the mayor, the entire board of supervisors, the police chiefs, labor, business, why everyone has come together uh, even the Republican Party isn't opposing this one. Uh, uh, we, we have to come together, pull together as a community, as the folks in 1906 did when they s identified the issue and said, hey, we got to get this done because our city is vulnerable. And that's just, that, that's a fact of life living here in this beautiful city of San Francisco that we live in a place that is vulnerable and we need to prepare for the worst case scenario. So if in fact it does play out, which in, in, scientists tell us it may, uh, we're ready to respond quickly and give, give our firefighters the, the tools they need. Star Child, any final thoughts? Yeah, um, this doesn't address why, you know, if this is so important, why hasn't the money been budgeted all along year by year? Why wait until 2014 and then suddenly say, oh, it's an emergency, we need $400 million and we're going to raise your taxes to do it because we want to keep our six-figure salaries and our exorbitant budgets. You know, every agency always wants to increase their budgets, so it's no mystery that the fire department, the police department, and so on are for this. Their heads are appointed by the mayor who's, you know, backing this plan. Um, but a former mayor, Willie Brown, said something uh, very interesting in his uh, column in the Chronicle last year, talking about these kinds of projects, uh, defending the, the, the Transbay Terminal and the, the huge cost overruns uh, you know, for that. He said, we always knew that the initial estimate was way under the real cost, just like we never had a real cost for the Central Subway or the Bay Bridge or any other massive construction project. In the world of civic projects, the first budget is really just a down payment. If people knew the real cost from the start, nothing would ever get built. Uh, the idea is to get going, start <coughs> digging a hole, and make it so big there's no alternative to coming up with the money to fill it in. Now, he was being honest, and I think that's exactly what the strategy is here. You know, I, I think that they're waiting until it's an emergency and then say, oh, we have to raise property taxes, we have to raise taxes, you know, and, and hope people forget about the way they've been wasting money all along and how they haven't budgeted and prepared for this. They'll just reward them for doing the same old thing over and over again than going to voters and crying, oh, it's an emergency. Thank you both for your comments and your time today. Thank you. We hope that this discussion was informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco election website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, June 3rd.